Hello girls, I hope you are staying safe at home. To continue with uh, biology, five kingdom classification. Okay, so today we will discuss the five kingdom classification. Now, as I told you in the last upload, the five kingdom under the recent scheme of classification are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. So first we will discuss kingdom Monera. So your children in each kingdom I will give you or uh, like you know what are the characteristics of um, the organisms found in kingdom Monera and give examples. So example will be bacteria and uh, you will write down the characteristic. They are single cell organisms first. Number two they have no organized nucleus. Number three the nuclear material or DNA is inside the cell and it is not enclosed in a nuclear membrane that is why it is known as prokaryotic pro means primitive karyon means nucleus why the nucleus is uh, primitive because the dna material or the chloro um, you know chromatin fibers which are supposed to be inside the nucleus with the new within the nuclear membrane nuclear membrane is absent okay and next number four they are devoid of any membrane bound organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast next we come to kingdom protista or which is also known as prototista okay they are eukaryotic eukaryotic means the nucleus is bound inside a nuclear membrane and they are unicellular means they are made up of just a single cell so the first uh, characteristic is they are single celled they have a well with a well defined nucleus and a nuclear membrane okay and examples they have um, chlamydomonas they include both the unicellular green autotrophic means plants because they are making their own food autotrophic means they can make their own food okay you uh, one word answers remember that as well as unicellular non green heterotrophic organisms so in this case you we have both uh, green autotrophic which has a uh, chloroplast and they can make their own food and non-green heterotrophic means which depend on other organisms for food they cannot make their own food so chlamydomonas is autotrophic it is green in color and euglena amoeba and paramecium are non-green and heterotrophic means they cannot make their own food they depend on other organisms for their food and of course there are some multicellular photosynthetic plant like organisms also photosynthetic means these organisms are green in color they have chlorophyll and they can make their own food and example is pandorina okay so here you can see amoeba chlamydomonas paramecium and euglena in figure 8.4 these are protesta next we come to kingdom fungi they are multicellular previous two protista and monera were unicellular one primitive nucleus another one had a mod, uh, the normal nucleus so kingdom fungi these are multicellular eukaryotic that is the nucleus has a nuclear membrane a chlorophyllous means no chlorophyll and saprophytic means it depends on others for food okay so most fungi the first one first um, uh, characteristic they are made up of thread like hyphae okay there's no need for you to write this number two many nuclei distributed in the continuous cytoplasm example bread mold toadstool yeast penicillium actually these are all mushrooms if you've seen them okay now next we come to kingdom plantae plants they are multicellular eukaryotic and autotrophic autotrophic means they can make their own food eukaryotic as i already told you uh, the nucleus is bound inside a nuclear membrane okay so they are made up of many cells first uh, this one uh, you know uh, the first um, characteristic they are made up of many cells or they are multicellular many celled organisms one word answer many celled organism your answer will be multicellular okay number two they all have chlorophyll and they make their own food by photosynthesis okay that is they are autotrophic that is they make their own food so that is kingdom 
plantae next uh, kingdom plantae is further divided into five divisions thallophyta which consists of algae bryophyta which consists of mosses pteridophyta which consists of ferns gymnosperms pines and angiosperms flowering plant so first thallophyta it includes multicellular algae that is seaweeds and kelps thallophytes are autotrophic first characteristic they are autotrophic as they contain chlorophyll number 2 they have a thallus like body that is the plant body cannot be distinguished thallus like body means the body cannot be distinguished into roots stems or leaves okay and number 3 they are primarily aquatic or they are aquatic uh, organisms that is they are found uh, specially where there is water you know uh, algae you see growing on ponds especially old ponds where the water is stagnant okay the uh, green slimy layer that you see on the top and especially during the rainy seasons when there is continuous rains you will see algae growing even on the terraces of your homes it is very slippery and you need to watch out otherwise if you step on it it is slippery so you may fall next we come to bryophyta which example mosses and liverworts so the first uh, characteristics they are autotrophic they have number 2 they have a plant body that lacks true root stems and leaves number 3 they possess root like stem like and leaf like structures which are known as rhizoids collid and phyllids respectively root like rhizoid stem like collid and leaf like phyllids okay now next we come to pteridophyta all ferns come under pteridophyta p is silent so uh first characteristic they have a plant body that can be distinguished into roots stems and leaves number 2 the leaves are often the leaves are don't say often made up of leaflets bearing spores on the underside and number 3 they are non flowering plants all of you must have seen ferns now gymnosperm cycas spine fur okay all the do- dupies that we see around are gymnosperms okay that is uh, they have naked seeds seeds are not formed in a fruit the hard uh, seeds i think you've seen the cones um this there you can see in this diagram your figure this type of structure that you see are the seeds okay and it is not inside it is not inside mm, you know inside a fruit so the plants belonging to this they have naked uh, seeds number 1 the plants now first this thing it is um, uh, the first characteristic the plants belonging to this group bear naked seeds okay that is the seeds are not enclosed in fruits as they are non flowering number 2 these are non flowering plants number 3 gymnosperms they bear seeds in structures called cones this is the cone that i just showed you in the diagram they have both male and female cones containing pollen and ovules respectively they may either be trees or shrubs number 4 they may either be trees or shrubs okay there is no need for you to write this in the characteristic okay so there are two types and they are known as cycads and conifers i wish we were in school i would be showing you both this kind maybe when we come back i will show you if you remember please remind me now next we come to angiosperms all flowering plants are known as angiosperms okay the first characteristic they have a highly developed plant body which can be differentiated into root stem leaves flowers and fruits number 2 the seeds are enclosed in a fruit okay so this has only two characteristic and it is divided into two monocots and dicots okay now monocots the plants belonging to this group bear seeds having only one cotyledon the first um, characteristic is they bear seeds having only one cotyledon like you know maize rice wheat okay number 2 the leaves have parallel venation long like grass like maize if you see uh just i'm drawing here at the side 
this type of leaves they have and venation parallel to each other the veins are parallel to each other just step out from your houses and take a look at some grass long grass growing and just look at the venation you'll see there okay and um, they have parallel venation and number three the root system is fibrous that is if you uproot a grass you will see the roots a bunch of clusters okay that is a fibrous example maize rice grass next is dicots the plant belonging to this group the first characteristic bears seeds with two cotyledon okay that is um, like you know grams are uh, like when we talk about grams rajma beans okay all these have seeds which have two cotyledons the leaves have reticulate venation number two the leaves have reticulate venation okay reticulate means if i let me draw it here if this is the leaf it has from here it's not parallel reticulate means like a network okay like this reticulate venation and they have a uh, tap root system number 3 they have a tap root system tap root means one long then again they have secondary roots like this and then they have tertiary roots that time fibrous root was just a cluster of roots isn't it so example pea potato apple sunflower rose and so on next we have kingdom animalia now animals they are multicellular eukaryotic and heterotrophic they cannot make their own foods you know so the, they depend on other organisms for food so they are multicellular organisms without cell wall without chlorophyll and obtain food by eating or sucking that is heterotrophic means differently nourished they, they obtain food from other organisms okay so the first characteristic is they are multicellular without cell wall without chlorophyll Number two, they obtain food by eating or sucking. And the organisms belonging to this group are usually mobile. They can move about because they have to move about in search of food. And there are some like sponges and corals that we find in the water. They are non-mobile. They cannot move about. They are also known as sessile. So of all the living organisms, we are most familiar with plants and animals which form uh, which fall under plantae and animalia kingdom so we will be studying about the different um, the differences between these two okay so here table 8.1 gives you the difference between plants and animals please read through it is very very easy you don't have to remember all you remember only four differences between plants and animals so next uh, we'll move on to uh, you know uh, this is not there in your syllabus binomial name, name let me just quickly check naming of organism it is just useful to know it is not there in your syllabus so there is no need for us to learn but uh, children I want you to learn in this box scientific names of some common organisms and i have told you how to write now here in the text you can see it is written in italics but we cannot write no when you're writing in your handwriting you cannot write in italics so as i already told you how do you write the scientific name you'll write it separately you first one even in the middle of a sentence the first you write with a capital letter second one with a small letter the name of the genus with capital letter the name of the species with small letter and underline it separately with the pen you're writing for example here homo sapiens felis domesticus canis familiaris and so on please learn all this okay very very important for you now next we come to major groups of animals the an animal kingdom is divided into nine major phyla you have to learn it by heart and you have to learn it in order Porifera, Nidaria, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata and Codata. Okay, first let us talk about Invertebrata and Vertebrata. Now the first, uh, the phyla 1 to 8 mentioned above, okay, that is till um, Echinodermata. This first 8 form... A category which are known as invertebrates that is these organisms do not have a backbone 
The last phylum Chordata includes all animals which have some kind of a backbone and they are known as vertebrates. So invertebrata are those animals which have no backbone and vertebrata are those animals which have a backbone. Okay. So here again table 8.2 shows you the difference between vertebrates and invertebrates. Learn any four from there. Okay. Now invertebrate phyla from Porifera to Echinodermata. Okay, now first is phylum porifera. The word porifera comes from pore bearing. Okay, so pore bearing means they have tiny pores like sponges. Example, cycon and bath sponge. Okay, now these are the porifera, the simplest multicellular organism. If I ask you which is the simplest multicellular organism, what will your answer be? Your answer will be porifera in one word answers. So, the first characteristic, their body consists of a hollow tube. It is hollow inside, empty inside. Okay, this internal part is hollow here. Number two, there is no single mouth. It does not have a mouth, but many pores or canals all around the body. What do they have? They have tiny holes. Okay, uh, they are, that is number two. There is no single mouth, but many pores or canals are present. Okay. Through these pores only, uh, what happens in the body wall through which water enters the body. And from this water, the sponge capture their food. Whatever food is comes in with the water, it will take in the food. And number three, a single large opening on the top is the exit for water. So here in this diagram, this opening at the top and here it is an exit for water so it has one opening at the top which is actually the exit for water from the body from the pores throughout the body it will take in water it will take the food whatever enters with the water and whatever is not required it will come out from the top okay so the sponges are uh, number four the sponges usually have a skeleton of microscopic spicules or elastic sponge in fibers so except for one or two freshwater sponges all are found in the sea now next we move on to phylum nidaria also known as cylenterata nidaria sea is silent okay examples hydra jellyfish sea anemone corals now in nidarians number one characteristic it has a two-layered body which encloses a single cavity known as cylenteron okay it is in the cavity where digestion takes place number two the cavity opens by a mouth at one end only it has only one opening okay and number three they have tentacles to catch food organisms and these nidarians are found in water especially in the sea very few in fresh water corals develop hard skeleton corals they are hard they have hard skeleton which is made up of calcium carbonate from their secretion remember though they are hard they are not um, uh, you know bones now the next three platyhelminthes nematoda and annelida they are uh, you know um, worms so phylum platyhelminthes they are flat worms first characteristic they have they are small soft flattened usually unsegmented wor uh, worms without a body cavity the body cavity is known as coelom one word answers remember number two the elementary canal has only one opening that is the mouth number three most of the flatworms live on or inside other animals are parasites but very few are free living in the sea or fresh water example of parasites we have liver fluke tapeworm free living that is outside the body planarian okay and um, later on we'll be doing about the tapeworm okay in another chapter now next we come to nematoda okay nematodes are also known as round worms they are long first characteristic they are long cylindrical and unsegmented with a fluid fill or false body cavity okay they have a body cavity but it is false they do not have a true body cavity number two the elementary canal opens at two ends that means it has a mouth and an anus number three they are mostly parasitic but again 
a very few live in the soil example hookworm and ascaries in humans now this is written in italics that means it is a scientific name eelworms you'll find in potato plants these are parasites okay and we'll be studying more about these roundworms later in chapter 16 next we come to phylum annelida these are segmented or ringed worms example earthworms you all must have seen earthworms leeches also you know and neris okay the body of an annelid worm is cylindrical the first uh, characteristic the body is cylindrical and divided into ring like segments number two it has a well-developed digestive system with the elementary canal open at both ends with a mouth and anus okay then they have number three they have a true body cavity which is known as coelom okay now all earthworms you know where do they live they live in the soil and damp soil they make burrows in the soil they make these burrows how do they make the burrows they eat the soil and then they will move forward okay the soil is eaten in very large quantities and is passed out through the other end of the body or the anus and they are known as castings the soil which they eat is thrown out from the body through the anus they are known as casting so this soil contains organic matter in the form of humus and it is very very fertile and of course broken bits of leaves okay earthworms they avoid light that is why they we do not see it in the open okay they are nocturnal nocturnal means they come out only at night they crawl up on the surface of the ground at night for feeding and meeting only at night they come out they do not come out in the sunlight now nocturnal you know opposite of nocturnal is diurnal diurnal means at daytime mosquitoes are nocturnal they come out at night butterflies are diurnal they come out during the daytime now dry soil is unsuited for earthworms earthworms remember they live in damp soil their skin has to be kept moist for respiration because exchange of gases takes place through the skin moist skin they have okay that is why they do not come out in the sun because if they come out in the sun what will happen water from their surface will evaporate and they will won't be able to you know respire that's why you sometimes you know when uh, this uh, bleaching powder is you know put in, in in the road and all you'll see lots of earthworms coming out because of the of course the smell of the bleaching powder and after some time they all become dry and they're all dead why because the surface of the skin uh, from the surface of the skin the water evaporates and they will not be able to respire and then they will all become dead so the most common the common indian earthworm which is known as ferritema fostuma it has a long cylindrical body which is divided into a series of 80 to 100 ring like segments they they do not have any head and there is no appendages so uh, the characteristic of um, earthworms or annelids they have um, it has a long cylindrical body number 1 which is divided into segments okay number 1 is it has a long cylindrical body divided into ring like segments number 2 they have no head and they have no legs no eyes and no tails number three the mouth is a simple opening in the front end they do not have any jaws there is no need for you to write this and um, the anus is located at the extreme hind leg that is number four okay sorry hind end now in a mature worm a short cylindrical band of thick glandular skin clitalium surrounds the uh, body like a oh, wait let me show you if the diagram is there like belts in segments 14 to 16 do we have a diagram of an earthworm uh, no. if, if you've seen an earthworm okay let me show you here okay the earthworm it has one more, like you know these segments and in the middle there is a long band like this this band we are talking about this part if you see an earthworm just take a look you will see that okay there in the segments 14 and 16 okay there is um, clitalium you'll find clitalium it surrounds the body that's clitalium okay it is a band a belt which is about one third the distance from the front end this clitalium serves in reproduction the light colored ventral side that is the lower side is lighter in color it has a few important openings and structures close to the clitellum they are concerned with re
production. Now, economic importance, the earthworm is highly useful in agriculture. Why? Because it loosens up and aerates the soil as it burrows. That is, air can pass through the burrow. This helps in the respiration of the roots of the plants and makes them grow well and penetrate deeper. The earthworms keep interchanging the topsoil with the lower layer and the soil becomes fertile. It increases the fertility of the soil. The earthworms excreta, as I already told you, is rich in nitrogenous matter, which is required for plant growth and presently earthworms are being used in vermiculture for producing high quality manure. Now uh, please find out what is vermiculture and let me know in the um, whatsapp group. Vermiculture is actually you know culture lots and lots of earthworms are cultured and for what you are going to find out and you are going to tell me. Now many people uh, they use earthworms as baits in catching fish. Okay, so we will do till here today, children. Okay, then in the next upload, we will start from arthro.